Hey, good day. It's Mike from Flex Radio, and I want to take a quick walk through. None of these are ever quick. On the Power Genius XL, the Tuner Genius XL, and the Antenna Genius XL, and how they all communicate together on today's Ham Shack, which is something we affectionately call the LAN in the Ham Shack. And the beauty of this technology, uh, even though these devices all support OEM radios through traditional methods, when we move to the LAN in the Ham Shack, we do not have to worry about RS-232 anymore. Uh, we also know that as COM or serial or maybe even USB. Uh, while we think it's actually easier, it isn't. And all those technologies, serial type communications are peer-to-peer -peer communications, much like two tin cans and a string. Well, you just can't easily add a third tin can. And uh, this is the advantage of the LAN and the ham shack. And it doesn't take a degree to be able to play with this or integrate it or set it up. So let's have a look. We have a tuner genius here. Uh, I'm going to take that at a standby. I clicked on it. We're on 30 meters, and if we look at my antenna genius here, we're going to see that we have, well, there's no 30 meter antenna. Well, why is that? Well, I don't own a 30 meter antenna. I'm going to put my tuner genius in standby, just for fun. It gives me a great power meter and an SWR meter, and I'm going to hit tune, and you're going to see we get this 8 to 1 SWR. Well, that's not great, so let's uh, have a look and, and tune that. I'll take it out of standby, and I'm going to hit tune, and the tuner automatically does this and it will remember exactly at this frequency uh, what the tuning solution was and here it is 67 and 0 across the bottom. Now you may find, uh, well let's just do the SWR again, we're in operate, we're going to send this 20 watt signal and it's 1.8 to 1. But if you're a tinkerer you can either grab the knobs on the front of the tuner or you can click here with your mouse and you see it goes bright blue I can now use my mouse to maybe, maybe I can get a better SWR. Okay, we're down to 1.06. I don't like that. We're going to, oh, that's not good. We'll just maybe leave that where it was. And my mouse, uh, there we go. And we can go over here to the last one, maybe muck with it a bit. Maybe I can do better or not. But click that, hit it out of tune, and just leave it alone, and it will remember that setting. So now for fun, if we were to turn on the amplifier, and uh, it says Power Genius ready for transmissions down here. And I'll just drop this down a little bit just because I don't want to interfere with anybody. The 10 watts drive, you'll see that the amplifier's got a 1.2 to 1, 1.13. Varying numbers are not uncommon. And the amplifier is quite happy. And uh, that's all well and great. If we were to flip over to my 40 meter V, we'll put this back in standby. But if you case you forget, not to worry, you can actually tune it. We'll put the amplifier automatically in standby. Uh, we'll go into bypass, and we hit tune, and the same story. 4.8 to 1, almost 5 to 1. We take it out of tune. We, uh, out of, we put it into operate, rather, and we hit the tune button. The same story. We're tuned. Uh, we give it some power, and we see there's 11 watts. And for fun, we hit amp, we hit operate, and the same story. Amplifier sees a nice 1.2 to 1, and uh, that's fine. I think I have my limit set to a minimum of 1.4. Anything less than 1.5 is quite acceptable. For years, I've run my Power Genius XL up to 2 to 1, no issues, especially a deal for me on 160 meters. Now, here's a cool thing with all this stuff integrated together. Watch what happens to the tuning solutions here if I change antennas. Uh, I flipped, it went to a different number, I went to my 40 meter array, it's a different solution. So it remembers what antenna I'm using, even with two separate antennas or three on the same band, what the tuning solution is by frequency and by antenna. And that's great. Uh, I'll just pop open a menu here really quickly. Uh, this is the one-time configuration uh, where you have to configure the tuner genius to which radio you're using by serial number. It's a couple of mouse clicks. It's described in the manual. The same thing is also true for the power genius where it pops up and um, we just say the same thing that uh, which serial number or radio we're using because you can have multiple radios on the same LAN. And the same thing is also true uh, for the antenna genius, this one's a little more complicated, it takes a little more thought because you do have to configure your bands. Because often our bands are not just the hand bands. What if we're doing some SWLing? 
and which antennas do we want to use per band. And if you look here, we'll see we have a, on 60 meter, on the 60 meter antenna, I want it to be used on 40 and 30 meters. On the 40 meter antenna array, which is a phase dipole um, wire array, 40 and 30, and on my 40 meter V, which is exactly what we see here. Um, again, you have to tinker with that a little bit, not uh, in a one-time setup, and then you never need to worry about it. Um, you see I have a dummy load right now. I'm just using it to test something on 6 meters. Uh, I have it hecked up to port 6, so if I need a dummy load. But I can quickly edit that and say, hey, I also want to see the dummy load on 30 meters and hit save and save and reboot. And you're going to see when this reboots that we're going to have now four solutions on the antenna genius including the dummy load. So that's the beauty of using the Power Genius, the Tuner Genius, the Antenna Genius in a flex radio land in the ham shack ecosystem. And it just gets easier. You can share all this information on multiple computers. You can have your logbook on one computer, smart SDR on another computer, or even a maestro, and yet have still control, full control over all the equipment, or even ha have your maestro in smart control mode which gives you the big knobs of the maestro using smart SDR here. Um, really, the ability to make it your own. And again, it's not uh, an incredibly complicated thing that is required that maybe we've gone through with the older peer-to-peer -peer tin can in a string RS-232 world. So 73, thank you so much for listening. Take care.